So, effective talking. This is when <laughs> they aren't doing what you want them to do. And you have to be able to communicate that to them. Okay? Because there are times when you have to be able to say, no, this is not acceptable behavior in my house. These are our standards. These are our rules. You are not crossing them. Sorry. And I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm mid-30s. My parents still do that to me. I don't know if that's weird or not, but my parents say, no, I'm sorry, this is not how a Tim's acts. We don't do that. And I have to go, okay, mom. <laughs> so, effective talking. Sometimes parents need to do more than just listen. They have to direct and correct. And so, I'm going to use an example of the focus group um, that I was in. There was a, a situation where um, uh, a father was, was talking about his son. And uh, I, I've done focus groups with fathers. And this dad said um, that his son would go out on his skateboard all the time. And he'd go to the skateboard park. And he'd go riding on, the, on his skateboard. And he, he, dad went out and bought like this $80 helmet and the elbow pads and the wrist pads and the knee pads and all of these things. And he paid for it. And that was part of the rules. In their house, safety first. It's very important to be safe. And so this kid just would be like, yeah, okay, Dad, whatever. And he'd take the, the, the helmet, and you know, as soon as he'd walk out the door, he'd throw it in the bush and go. That is not acceptable behavior in our house. And so he sat down with the son and said, look, I have to explain this to you because this is what's happening for me. And again, what came up, the dad said, I'm scared. I'm worried about you. Now, again, can he force the, head, the thing on the kid's head? No, he can't. He can't. But... You can let them know what you're feeling. So, there are five steps in being able to communicate effectively with your child. The five steps are, number one, name the behavior or situation that you want changed. Number two is say how you feel about the situation. Ah, say how you feel about the situation. Be honest. Be honest. Next one is state the reason or consequence to you specifically. How does this behavior that they are, are doing impact you specifically? And the next one is say what you want done. What do you want as a parent? And finally, get a commitment. Ask for an agreement. Okay, so let's go through this step by step. So, naming the behavior. First of all, be specific. I really don't like it when you're bad. What the heck does that mean? And that's what uh, sometimes parents will come in, you know, he just needs to be good. And I say to them, what does good mean? Well, you know, good. Not doing the stuff he's doing. Like, what? So be specific. Number two, don't add blame. Um, again, this goes back to Gottman and, and his four, um, four horsemen. Criticism is um, one of those things that's just very directive, and it's an attack on the person individually. So you blame the behavior. You don't uh, blame the child. I'll give you a, a, for instance, from my personal life and my relationship with my partner. I go, to, um, uh, I go out with my buddies uh, once every couple of weeks or so, and we go out for wings, and we sometimes go to a movie. And I remember it was a Saturday night, and there was five or six of us, and I said, can I borrow the van? And my wife said, yeah, sure, that's fine. Just It's low on gas. I need you to fill it up before you get home because I've got early church meetings. Yep, no problem. So we get out. By the time I get home, it's like 2.30 in the morning. And I put my head down on the pillow and I go, oh, crap. <laughs> I forgot. And I fall asleep. 6.30, the alarm goes off. And it's kind of like in, in the movie Poltergeist. She, her head didn't even come up off the, the <laughs> like that. And she looks at me and the first thing she says is not good morning. It's, did you fill the car up with gas? <laughs> no. So she could have done one of two things. She could have gone, you are so inconsiderate. You are so stupid. I am so sick and tired of you. You never take into account what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. Now I'm going to be late for church and I have to get up now and my hair's not going to be done and I'm going to look uh, bad because it's your fault and you're such a jerk. I hate you. And off she would go. No, she would be attacking me. All right? So don't attack your child. Go after the behavior, not your child. So the other way that she could have approached me is, I asked you last night to put that gas in that car because I told you 
I was going to need it first thing in the morning, and you didn't do it, and I am so pissed off right now. I'm so upset that you didn't do what I asked you to do, because now I'm going to be late. She didn't attack me. She attacked the behavior. Okay? So don't add blame. Don't go after the kid and say, <clears throat> you. State the facts. So an example is, when you leave the kitchen a mess, because you know what, they left the kitchen a mess, and we're going to go through and we're going to add sentences to this and we'll have an entire paragraph at the end, okay? So, that's name the behavior. Next one is say how you feel. Again, be specific and remove all blame. Take the blame out. It doesn't need to be there. Because, yeah, they screwed up, but take the blame out and be specific. And nobody can argue with you if you state how you feel. I feel scared. I feel angry. I feel exhausted. Go ahead, argue with me. You can't. You can't argue when you say, I feel blank. I feel taken advantage of. That's how to say how you feel. Number three, state the reason or consequence to you. What does their behavior do to your situation? To you specifically? What does it do to you? How does it infringe on your personal needs? And explain it to them. Because then I have to take the time and energy to clean it up. It infringes on me because I have to do it now. State what you want. This is step four. State what you want. Again, what am I going to say? Be specific. What do you want? Be very specific. Start with, I would like, or I want, or I need <coughs> you to. And so the final sentence would be, I would like you to put the food away and put the dishes into the dishwasher. So, let's put it all together. Here's what it would look like. When you leave the kitchen in a mess, I feel taken advantage of because then I have to spend my time and energy cleaning up after you. I would like you to put the food away in the fridge and the dishes in the sink. 